Hello and welcome back everybody. Welcome to The Hobby Musician. Now you're joining us right in the middle of a mini-series. We are going through all the steps to build a guitar uh, from a kit. And so we've chosen a Telecaster build. And if you want to get caught up on all the previous episodes, click the link at the top and that'll uh, give you access to a playlist with all of the uh, building steps. And if this is your kind of thing and you really like this type of thing, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below. Now in today's episode, it's all about paint. Um, if you remember from our previous show, we were prepping the body and I was um, talking through how I wanted to make a belly cut. I wanted to contour the body. Now after that episode was finished, what I did was I sat down with the, the rest of the body and I just worked my way up over the whole thing progressively with um, finer and finer grit sandpaper. And I was just doing it by hand and I got up to the point where I have now gone over the entire body with 400 grit sandpaper. And what that's given me is that's given me a nice smooth uh, surface to act as the canvas uh, to add my paint. Now. I'm going to be using a very basic method to paint this guitar. You know, I don't have access to a, a high quality spray gun or anything like that. And as you can see here, I'm going to be using spray paints. Now, you can watch a ton of videos on other channels on YouTube. And for just about as many videos that show you how to paint a guitar with spray paint, there's that many methods. Everybody has their own unique approach and uh, subtle differences and steps. But the overview of what we're going to do today is I'm going to start with a primer. Now this primer, I'm just going to go over maybe two, uh, two or three very light coats. And what I want to do is I want to use this primer to provide that flat white um, base that will then take my color coat. Now I really like this blue color and I'm hoping that by using the primer first, um, that that will really help the color uh, to come through at its fullest uh, potential. Now the very last thing that I'm going to do, I am going to come back and I want this to be a fairly high gloss finish when everything's said and done. So I'm going to be using a gloss, kind of a clear coat at the end, but that's not going to be in today's episode. And the reason is I want to get my, I want to get my primer and color coat on first because I have plans for this body, I want to do some decal work. Now, the goal of my decal is I want to have the color on, um, and then I want to put the decal on that, and then come back over and encase the decal. I want the decal to be underneath that final clear coat. So, um, until I get my decals on there, I'm not going to worry about that final coat. So, the only uh, other thing before we ship all this stuff outside to get painting is this. I just wanted to show you how I've protected um, the areas that I don't want to take paint. Now if you look into this body, you can see that um, all of the cavities in that have been routed out in here um, are now blue. And that's because I took painter's tape, just that um, masking kind of painter's tape that you can get at a hardware store, and little piece by piece covered in and went all around the sides and the edges and the bottom of all of those cavities so that I can now paint you know, with abandon over the whole surface of this guitar and I, and I don't have to worry about building up paint in all of the, the pockets and the cavities where I don't necessarily want that paint to build up. Um, after everything's done, I can just go in here, peel that tape out, and it's going to be uh, raw wood underneath there. Now, um, I took a lot of time to do this and I would recommend you do as well. What I did was as I was putting that tape on, I came back the edges of the tape were kind of sticking up. I used a very sharp razor blade and very carefully just went around so that I am literally masked and, and covered up to the absolute surface of this guitar. And I recommend taking the time to be careful in the preparation phase so that when you come back to do your painting phase, you're totally fine. Now, I do want to show this on the back. I also took some of that painter's tape and I rolled it up and kind of shoved it in the mounting holes for the neck on the back. Now I did that for three of them. I just didn't want too much excess paint to get in there and maybe change the diameter, then you know, run into uh, problems when I try to put the neck on. But you notice one of them is empty. Now the reason I'm doing this is my particular method. Um, I'm gonna go outside and I'm actually gonna take some uh, stiff but still flexible wire and I'm going to bring that wire and thread it through and I'm actually going to hang this guitar body in order to paint it. Now that's going to allow me to kind of um, have it suspended in air and I can get to the front, to the back and all the sides a little more easily. So that's why I've left that uh, hole 
open. So with that, that kind of gives you the overview of what we're going to do in today's episode. So I'm going to pack all this stuff up and I'll see you guys in just a minute when we're all set up outside. All right, I'll be back. All right, well, we are here and we're all set up outside. Now, as you can see, I've got the guitar body kind of suspended from this tree branch. And just like we talked about, I'm going to go through and do light coats um, all over the body. Now, one tip that um, I've kind of picked up when doing this, if you're using spray paint on anything that has contours, like a guitar body, it's best if you spray or paint the contours first. Um, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of do light coats all along the curved edges and right in these nooks and crannies because it's much easier to see where you've gotten the paint so that when I come back and I do the longer kind of um, bulk painting on the, the flat surfaces, then I don't end up getting too much paint on a curve. So um, as we've done in previous videos, I'm gonna get to work here, but I'll time lapse it for you so you can kind of see how many coats. Um, like we said before, just a couple coats of primer and then a few coats of the color coat. So, all right, it's time to get to work. Welcome back everybody. Now before we do the final reveal on this, I know that for everybody watching at home, the time that passed from you seeing that last clip of me spray painting to right now was only a few seconds, three or four seconds. But I want to be honest and fully disclose that in real time, the time, the difference between me painting and today when I'm filming this is closer to two and a half weeks. And the reason for that is I made a very big mistake uh, in the preparation, in the painting. There, I made a huge blunder, and I want to be fully upfront with you guys. I'm willing to admit my mistakes, and I wanted to use this as a time to teach you uh, something that you can do to avoid potentially making the same mistake that I did. Um, here is the lesson, and then I'll show you pictures and, and talk you through why. If you're going to paint a guitar like I am, if you're planning to put some kind of color coat on it and you, you, I'm not talking about using a stain. If you want to use a stain and see the wood come through, that's not what I'm talking about. But if you want to cover the guitar with some kind of color or combination of colors, here's the lesson. Use grain filler. You just have to. You have to use a grain filler. And what I mean by that is when the body is still in its raw wood form, uh, there's a grain filler is like a putties or a paste kind of a thing that you spread and work all over the surface of the guitar. And what it does is it gets into all the nooks and crannies and kind of hardens up. And then that is what you come back and sand over. Now, the reason I'm telling you to use it, and you didn't see me use it, is because I discovered right as I was putting on the first coat of paint, I should have done that. I will tell you this, that I was a little bit, I mean, I was just um, caught off guard. When I was sanding the body, and I was talking about working up in grits of sandpaper, I was checking it, I was feeling, using my tactile senses to touch the wood as I was going through that. And by the time I used that 400 grit, I was looking at the body, I was feeling the guitar body, and it felt smooth, but that was deceiving. My fingers were not picking up, when I would run them over, my fingers were not picking up the, the divots and the grain um, texture that was still there. 
It wasn't until the very first coat of primer went on that I discovered it. I could see it. That, that white contrast really brought out all of the nooks and crannies that were still there. Now, in the moment, I knew I was filming. I knew I was going. I kind of was stuck. I, I, I didn't want to stop. I wanted to go. And I made a second mistake. I thought, well, if I just put enough paint on, I could use the paint to kind of flow into those uh, nooks and crannies. Now, if you're watching at home, go ahead, feel free, go in the comments and tell everybody how bad of an idea that is. Uh, paint is not a substitute for grain filler. But in the moment, I decided I was going to try to do that. So in actual fact, I didn't uh, get a, a clip of every single coat, but in actual fact, I put on five total coats of primer and three total coats of top coat, hoping that by that point I could build up enough paint uh, to then sand it back down to a flat surface. And because I did that, I let this body sit for a full week before I even thought about it again because I knew I had so much paint on there. I wanted it to have ample time to dry. So you're going to see now a picture. I'll put up a close up of what that looked like. When you look at the reflection of this light that's shining in there, you can see very clearly the the divots. Now this the the texture you're seeing is not what people refer to when they talk about orange peel. This is that is the grain of the wood. Those are the divots in the wood itself. Now orange peel is kind of um, a much more subtler effect when you're on a flat surface just from the droplets of paint hitting. You know it's not going to be a completely flat uh, coat. This what you're seeing right now is wood grain. So from there, I thought to myself, I said, well, okay, I'll just take care. I'm going to sand down, but if I'm very careful, I might be able to get away with this. I could sand down the high parts and uh, leave myself with enough color coat that um, I could treat it as if it never happened. Well, immediately that became clear that was not going to be the case. In this next picture, you're going to see um, that I began on the back side of the guitar, and I always recommend... Uh, whatever you're going to try, try on the back of a guitar, just in case it's a, a catastrophe. Well, you can see in this case that the dull, when, when you start to see those dull spots, that's the highest parts that have been sanded down. But those um, either shiny spots, depending on how the light is hitting it, or those little kind of um, abstract shapes that are kind of still dark, those are the much lower parts that the sandpaper hadn't hit yet. So you can kind of use a bright light like I was doing in this picture to, to help yourself see where you were sanding. Okay, well, I kept doing that and I knew that I had to work all of the surfaces down until all of it looked dull and flat. I like that last picture. But as I began to work it down, there was just so much that I had to work down that I began to start to burn through the color and that primer was coming back. So in that moment, I decided to actually do a little bit of practice for a future step. So this picture you're going to see is me using the back of the guitar as a workspace. I wanted to kind of um, practice and look at and tr practice my techniques for a future clear coat. And what you're going to see here is after I used the 800 grit sandpaper, I was wet sanding with the 800 grit, I took a portion of the back and I just went ahead and wet sanded it down to 2000 grit because I know that that is going to be kind of a second to last step when it comes to putting a gloss on here. And you can see in the picture, when you look at the area, I've got a dotted line that kind of helps separate. The 800 grit still looks flat and dull. But when you look at the area that I use 2000 grit, you can actually see, look at that paper towel sitting on the table. The reflection of that paper towel is what you see in the guitar body. So that 2000 grit I know is going to be um, really helpful to get us that much closer to a, a high mirror gloss on this. Okay. So I knew that uh, the, this particular color coat, I was going to have to do something. So I just continued working that body down until all of the surfaces were flat. I didn't care how much of the color coat I had to take off. I just knew I needed a flat surface. So this picture is going to show you the full extent of my shame. So as you look at this, um, you're going to notice just 
areas everywhere. You see all of those white spots. Well, that is how much it took me to sand down uh, to get a perfectly flat body. And I was using that lamp. Uh, I've got a bright light shining on this. I was kind of holding it at different angles to make sure that I could see any areas I missed. And you just see how much of the color code I ended up taking off to get just a flat guitar. Okay, so I have a flat surface everywhere, all along the edges and all along the, the front and the back. So then I took it outside and I knew I just needed to recover uh, with some more color coat. I couldn't take it on like that. I couldn't cover it with clear coat. I wanted that blue everywhere. So I rehung the guitar and put two more light color coats on there, but I ran into a, another problem. I ran out of spray paint. So after that second coat, um, my spray can ran out and I was right in the process where I just couldn't run out to the hardware store uh, to get a replacement. So I thought to myself, I said, I think that might be enough. So I let the guitar dry for a few more days and brought it back up here. And I began to then very carefully wet sand that last, uh, now I just had orange peel. It was just um, the, the inconsistencies of individual droplets of paint. And that 800 grit sandpaper does a really good job lightly working it um, into that body. I was able to just knock off the tops of that orange peel to finally get what is resting underneath this cover. And I am happy to, to reveal that this is what we have. We have finally a flat um, 800 grit uh, finished surface all over this guitar. So the back, um, even, even when I hold it you know, against the light like this, it still looks dull. That's okay. This dullness is gonna get fixed when I get that glossy clear coat over the top of it. But you can see all over the back here um, is nice and even. Um, you don't see any more of those white spots. All over the front, uh, same kind of thing. I went over. Now, I didn't, uh, I didn't worry too much about any of the areas. I, I sanded the whole thing, but I didn't go crazy on all of these areas kind of right here in the middle because most of the front is actually going to be covered by our pick guard and the um, a, a cover that's going to go over our, our control pots and those kind of things. So all around the edges, I did you know spend a lot of time to make sure it was right. And then I pretty much got the middle of this front. Now the one last thing that I'm going to have to do is after I did this, I was being very careful because I knew I didn't have tons of color coat. There are only a handful, a handful of very small areas, pretty much just on edges, where I barely, barely went through the color coat. And you can still see just tiny little strips um, of primer. There's one there, and then I think maybe here on the, on the bottom, uh, there's another one right here near the, the um, uh, output jack uh, where that's going to go. And what I'm going to do is I, I, am, I have a plan for a, a way to fix this. I'm going to take, when I get ready to do my final clear coat, I'm going to take a very fine, very small art brush. And I'm going to, uh, by that point, I will go to the hardware store and get another uh, can of paint. And I'm going to spray some on a, on a paper towel or a cup or something like that and use that art brush and very, very carefully and with not much paint on there, I'm going to try to spot fix uh, just these, these handful of, of places that remain. Um, in, and then while it's still tacky, be able to go over the whole thing with clear coat. So after all of that, I hope um, that this episode still serves to um, teach you guys and show you that it is possible, very possible, to do you know really nice color coats um, on guitar bodies at home as a hobby musician. Um, but please learn from my mistakes. Take the time uh, to prep your guitar body and it will save you potentially weeks of time and hours of sanding and resanding and painting and resanding. Um, I don't want that to happen to you. So learn from my mistakes and it'll, uh, it'll turn out much better for you. So that's going to do it for our episode all about the painting. Now this body uh, is ready for the decal work that I want to do. So we'll catch that on the next episode. And as always, thank you for watching. And until next time, play on my friends, play on.